Hey everyone, thanks for listening to Sex with Emily. Okay, having standards is a good thing when it comes to dating, but what if your high standards are actually the thing that's holding you back? In today's podcast, worried you're doomed to a G-spotless sex life? Is tit for tat the way to recover from marital infidelity? What sex positions will put you in control in the bedroom? Also, find out what careers are most likely to land you a swipe right on Tinder. I mean, not that that matters, right? I mean, you are who you are. Okay, everyone, thanks for listening. You know what's so great about sex toys? They don't get jealous. They just want you to feel good, even if it means they sit one out while you try something new. Well, I was recently introduced to that something new, the rabbit company Leon Vibrator. I'm here to tell you that this little palm-sized beauty is simply awesome. It's made for external use and features two ears that are perfectly positioned for clitoral stimulation. The whole piece is gently curved to match a woman's natural contour, so it can literally lay on you, as the name suggests. But its ergonomic shape feels so good to hold and move around, you'll find endless different sensations by changing the lay-on's positions. It's whisper quiet and has six vibration patterns. But my favorite feature? The rabbit company keeps the motion in the ears, not the handle. No more numb hands from the transfer of vibration. It's really amazing. Like all rabbit company products, the lay-on is 100% body safe, features easy-to-use controls, and has a five-year warranty. To order your Leon, visit therabbitcompany.com or click the Rabbit Company banner on my website. Hey, why not? Lay it on today. Look into his eyes. They're the eyes of a man obsessed by sex. Eyes that mock our sacred institutions. Bedroom eyes, they call them in a bygone day. Hey, Emily. You got a boyfriend? Because my man E here, he just got his heart broken. He thinks you're kind of cute. A girl's got to have her standards. Oh, my. Do women know about shrinkage? Isn't it common knowledge? What do you mean? Like laundry? It shrinks? Can we not talk about sex so much? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. I feel so good. Being bad feels pretty good. You know, Emily's not the kind of girl you just play with. You're listening to Sex with Emily. We're talking about sex, relationships, and everything in between. For more information, check out sexwithemily.com. Check out Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, all that stuff. It's all at sexwithemily and facebook.com slash sexwithemily. And thank you, thank you, thank you for subscribing to the show. We so appreciate when you subscribe. Makes us happy. Helps us. Helps the show. We can keep doing more shows for you. And thanks for telling your friends about it. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for being you cry Anderson thanks for being you <laughs> you're right it's not even November yet what are you doing with all the things I don't know settle down with I'm the just thanks. very grateful and thankful you are she she really is that's that's the real Emily she's she, you just you're just one of those people you're all over the place at times and you got a million <laughs> things going on you're juggling a lot of stuff and you you seem a little bit frazzled at times but you always got a smile on your face and you're just genuine like you don't have bad things to say about people you're just a good person you really are. And I meet a lot of people that seem like that, but I'm like, oh, they got a dark side. <laughs> I don't think you really even have a dark side. I could see you getting a little bit overwhelmed and frustrated and like maybe. It's more about my, my darkness yeah. is about my own stuff. I'm not like thinking other people. I, I don't, people. I don't talk about, I really try. I really don't I mean, I might make you know jokes and that, but I, don't, I really don't talk about people. I think I know that's a really that bad habit to gossip. Super positive, but I know that they got a real dark right. side. I know and you I, like you're that not too. that person I'm not that person because you've no. seen me. Yeah. If I could be dark. I've seen you. I've seen you at your best. I've seen you at your worst. And <laughs> exactly. Your worst is better than most people's. Oh, Anderson. Okay. So, Thank you. So. I appreciate it. I just want to let the but listener know. You're dark, know, but that's um, cool. I'm dark. No, yeah. I just want to let the listener know that they're getting the real deal. Like, this is really Emily. Yeah, like, there's some people that are just like they, they are who they are on air, off air. Yeah, I guess I pretty much. I always tell people that when they're like, I want to come on your show. I'm nervous. I'm like, it's like talking to me. Yeah, it's not, I don't really, I'm not like putting on my sex with Emily hat. Of all the things that I do and all the shows that I do, this is the, the most fun for me. It's the easiest for me because you do all the heavy lifting and I just kind of sit here and, and watch you do your you thing. It's fun. Sometimes. And I cut you off sometimes. Yeah. And it frustrates fun, no. you to no end. No, it's good. Let's do Except it. Except for I have ADD. Okay, listen. So then what? Oh, there's like this a thing. puppy. What? Okay. Um, also, did, did you I hear say about this? 
stop. You can download the show also on Google Play, SoundCloud, and Spotify and review us too. I don't mean to be so like needy here, mm-hmm. but all this stuff helps. We love doing the shows. Everything I just built up for you. What? By, uh, just, I'm kidding. Totally joking. <laughs> um, and also, you can, I don't know. What the <laughs> Emily, what's Emily, your if name? You, if you see her like on the street, she'll just be like, hi, follow me. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm joking. I don't I'm say saying you that. are the exact person on air as you are off air and if I saw you on the street, I'd say follow me on Instagram. Yeah, on Instagram, yeah. I would not. I know you want it. Nice I, to I, meet I, you. I'm Have you been literally. to my Instagram page? I'm saying, oh, because, because I'm the same, same wherever person. I go. Yes. Exactly. Hey, Emily. I just say, I introduce myself as Sex with Emily. Hi, I'm um, Sex with Emily. I'm although sex. I hate people do that. Like, have you met Sex with Emily at a party really loud? Oh, you know and what you should do? And then I become do. the thing. You should be like, party. I don't want it to be about sex. Hello. What? I'm Emily. Sex with Emily. Like James Bond. Like Bond. So anyway, um... And and the guy looks at me. He's like, "Oh, keeps typing." And I know that he heard. I'm like, "No, I'm not. I'm not a prostitute. I, I'm sex. I'm a podcast." He's like, "Okay, yeah, fine." Like some people are like, "Oh yeah," and he's like, "Just he just had straight face, yeah. straight face." Straight. My niece was like rolling her eyes. How old's your niece? It was actually the 14 year old niece was there, but I had mm-hmm. a few incidents. Like my, I have an eight year old niece, 14. And yeah. 16 going on 17. Wasn't, didn't you get like in trouble? Yes, with the 14 year old. We revisited that again. Okay. And she said, she was eight. And she was, I was eight. I'm like, you came to my house in San Francisco (laughs) and you, I don't even know how you saw this. My bookshelf has like 500 textbooks on it. I was in my grad school at the time. You don't know how she saw it. And no, I was like, I don't know how she did, but she went back to my brother and my sister in law were in town. She, she, she sat in my apartment, went back to their hotel room. And she said, Mommy, how come every book on Aunt Emily's um, shelf has the word sex in the title? And then she started reciting them. Condolingus, like lesbian sex, polyamory. Like she had memorized the titles. And I don't know. And I asked her, I'm like, how did you do that? She goes, I don't know. It was weird. I remembered them all. Mm-hmm. But then my eight-year-old niece and I were on our Snapchat, as we do, snapping. The whole, like she, she knows how to do it, right? She's doing it, looking at my stuff. And then... Like she's just sending it to her my to my nieces and she's sending snaps to my mom and I, to my uh, to Madison <laughs> and then that's it like she's doing that we did that for like an hour so I see my sister in law for lunch yesterday before I left the other day before I left and she says to me so Lexi who's eight asked me what sexy means she goes so that's better than sex like it's like I get in trouble I'm like yeah. okay well did you tell her that it's nothing bad like I'm just I can't hide it you know right. like I'm sorry she's not sexy like it's fine. Is that so bad? She's eight. You got any younger ones coming up? Or, <laughs> no. Or are you going to get through this? And it, no, but you're the good news is the, the older line. ones are finally asking me questions. Yeah, like now it's going to be like actually okay, a benefit. I'm sorry she asked you sexy. It could be worse. There could have been dick pics coming in on my Snapchat, which there were not. Mm-hmm. So that was fun. And, How um, long has it been since you got a dick pic? Um, A real one? You mean not yeah, like from my like Catherine or something or like... No, no, no. Like a real one. Like a, I don't think I've ever gotten one. From like a listener who might have gotten your email oh. by mistake or something like well, that. Well, we have a team uh, of people here who have to... Um, filter? Uh, really? They filter the emails now. Um, Are there a lot of dick pics that come through? Uh, not a lot of dick pics. Not a lot of dick pics, she says. Emails, on emails. On Facebook. On Facebook? You, yeah, they get their dick pics. I don't even mess with Emily's DMs. Okay. No. Oh, yeah. You should I can see my imagine. Instagram DM. I, it's getting a little dirty. Don't you... Do, yeah, I don't stop it. Go guys. to sex stop with and please don't. Send it doesn't me add anything to the show. Stop you it. You know what? It, but the good thing about Instagram is they blurry it out. They know it's a oh, dick pic. Oh, they tile it? Really? Yeah, I can show you after. There's like, a program. I literally that... have, you have 99 plus direct So it looks like requests. Japanese porn when you get it. Yes. Nice. And they said, we've blurred this image to protect you. <laughs> I don't know how they know. I'm like, thank you, because they don't blur like ponies. I love that they. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder if they Does have ever like mistaken. Oh, you should, they've mistaken you should like a, a dog snout for a dick, and they're like, "We've blurred it." But, but I love that they're sending it to you anyways to protect you. They're blurring it. Why not just not send it? Why, do, why are you still send right. it? Right, you should take a gander sometime into my DMs. It's a good place to be. They blur them. If you really I need me? Knew. Don't DM me on Instagram. You can. You know what I gotta tell you though? I go once a month. I go through and I uh-huh. do when I like can't sleep. And not that I don't. Think it's important. I can't sleep. And I'm like, I go through people write really, really nice uh-huh. things, and I do read them, and I try to respond to them, and, and they're like, "I love your show. Right. That's great." You could also email me feedback at sexwithelmy.com because yes. I might not want to go into the DM dick pic. Good world. news, though, when they tile your dick, guys, uh, it makes it look a little bit bigger. <laughs> Don't encourage. <laughs> Don't encourage that kind of behavior. Um, <laughs> That's so funny. I have no idea. What? Yeah, I'll show I you. Wonder, I wonder. I, I'm sure it's a computer program, but I like the idea of somebody actually just going through each one. Dick I don't pic, know how they know. Maybe the person, who knows? Yeah, it's funny. I know. I blur dick pics for Instagram. What do you do? Um, okay. We also had some great shows lately. We had face-sitting, fetishes, and foreplay with uh, foibles with Joanna Angel. 
You know Joanna. I do. She's I watched awesome. her pee on a man. Yeah, she did. She was squirting, peeing. Well, it ended up being pee. But that was a great show, so check that out. She's a, a fun chick. Who peed on someone? She is uh, not a here. Character. She didn't pee anyone. Here. No, it was years ago, and I had to tape it uh, with the camera, video camera, and it was uh, yeah, it was an experience. Peeing, watching her pee, mm-hmm. like a good time. Yes. Um, okay, so what else can take? Oh, September it's almost over, but not too late to celebrate Back to Sexual Confidence Month because the point of this month help you have better sex, which all starts with confidence sexual confidence so we've been doing a lot of giveaways and posts and blogs and check it all out on our website but you can still win a few days left so uh follow us on instagram win to learn how win 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 what win everything okay. sex toys products toys <clears throat> care things package. care package little of sex love. package care package of don't love. send that to camp anyone at camp by mistake because i get care packages when i'm up at camp that'd be a bad one to get if i ever get a care package at camp uh that's mark sex with emily i, I sorry Do no offense yeah i won't open it i got it yeah Please don't. Bring it home Doesn't and I'll follow well I saw my nieces like brownies at camp and they didn't open, they didn't give them to her either. Well, did you put sex with Emily on the return no! address? No! <laughs> they just don't give them packages at camp and that's the best part when I went to camp. I know. Get in care packages, especially if like, it's at lunch or something. You get it in front of everybody else. You're like, look at this. Somebody likes me. I know. My parents didn't um, send me packages. But I sent. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. They were fine. You know, they birthed as me. A rebe- mom birthed me and stuff. You rebelled as a result and you started a sex show. Exactly. Well <laughs> exactly. Mom, you should have sent me some magazines at camp. <laughs> uh, here's what you get. Do you yeah. want some sex in the news? I love the sex in the news. And I think I told you this a couple weeks ago off air. But uh, my favorite still is the Swedish sex in the news you brought to, to the table about the guy that got busted for beating off in Sweden at, on the beach, but the judge did not charge him because he wasn't making eye contact right, with anyone. Right. So That's he was okay. He it was, was in his right. own little world right. fantasizing about God knows what. That's to this day my favorite sex in the news you brought to the table. Oh, well, I'm glad I could have been here. Want to give you a bar. Life. Thank you. Yes. I appreciate the bar. So you That's want us to keep beating that bar. That is really funny. Yes. Okay. Tinder reveals jobs that get the most dating app action and the results may just surprise you. Dating app Timber, Tinder has revealed the most popular professions people swipe right for um, in the UK with models finding themselves way down on the list. Now, I would think models, dudes would just be swiping on models and chicks too, I guess. Mm. I, I don't know. For men, lawyers, actors, and creative directors were three professions most likely to receive a yes from a prospective date. Shocking. Teachers, dentists, and speech pathologists were considered the most appealing in a female partner. What what is it about speech oh, you, pathologists? The guys are looking for this in girls. Yeah, dentists. So what were the three? Okay. Wait, wait. So for men, women want men to be lawyers, actors, or creative directors. Guys want women to be teachers, dentists, well, or speech pathologists. It's the UK. I'm just saying. Maybe the dentist. Oh, or, the dentist. They get some from, yeah. right. Okay. Speech pathologist. That's that's an odd one. I I dated a speech pathologist for a while, and she was a colossal pain in the ass. Always correcting me every time I stumbled or mumbled. She'd bring it up, so I I would not. Maybe that's just kind of a, a weird byproduct. But also, um, I would think. I don't know. I would just think that we'll cover nurse, maybe caretaking, because teacher. Yeah, the caretaking, the teaching. Know. Maybe, and you know what, teaching is probably uh, even. It's noble here in the States, but it might be even thought of as more noble exactly. over there in the That's United. true. That's true. Um, journalists appear on both lists, while models come 14th for both genders. Every day, there are more than 1.4 billion swipes and 26 million matches, whatever, on the app. Here's the other tip. Besides having interesting jobs, photographs, key to success on the app. Look straight into the camera and smile using your teeth. Mm-hmm. Shows confidence, shows that you're healthy and friendly. And Healthy. you might need a dentist. I don't know. Don't be tempted to airbrush your picture or present yourself looking too much better than you do in real life and give group photos a miss to avoid confusion. I agree. You know what's the worst? When you're on a dating app and there's like a group of guys. Like yeah. I'm like, which dude are you? Right. I don't want to look at your friends. I don't have yeah. time to be like, oh, are you the one with the tall, the head, the brown yeah. hair, the blonde hair? I mean, I know I might have seen you in one previous photo, but that's annoying. Here's another one. Don't what? use like a uh, crop out like a, a, a an old picture with the an blonde hair. You can still see the blonde shoulder. hair. It's the yeah, worst. that's bad. You notice and that. I don't like the drinking out of the big red cups. Now people it's red an solo thing. cup. Ugh, I hate solo cups. Just don't do that. It's okay, good so song, here's, but this is what I want to give, tell you. Men, here's yeah. the top ten professions that got the most swipes for men: lawyer, actor, creative director, right. flight attendant. What? For men, journalist. It's like Jim J. Bullock in, uh, on that show, Too Close for Comfort. He was a flight attendant. Oh Jim God. J. Bullock. Yeah, how do you remember that? Because <laughs> I used to watch that show. So did I. Entrepreneur, CEO, architect, personal trainer, teacher, doctor, photographer. Registered nurse, engineer, model, chef. These are all for men. I love that. I, I love that doctor comes below all those other. Exactly, because doctors are really important. <laughs> um, okay, women. Number one, teacher, 
dentist, speech pathologist, Weird. interior designer, oh. event planner, lawyer, real estate agent, personal trainer, registered nurse, journalist, recruiter, musician, psychologist, model, flight attendant. Huh. Flight attendant. Yeah. Makes a lot of lists. Um, I think this is interesting. I, I, and again, yeah, it was done in the UK, but what do you do? Change your... I can tell you what Ooh. you can do. What? Who's Who swiping though for like, you know, no, down the aren't road? They aren't they swiping for, like, for a quick bang? They're not looking at your teeth. They look at your boobs, the bangs, or the bangs or whatever. But maybe it's also maybe over maybe the there's UK. there's more teachers. There's more hot teachers yeah. that would get a swipe regardless or of what they do. Or there just might be more teachers. But then if that was the, if that's the case, models are probably going to be the Can hottest. Can we talk about the real thing that matters? Is that, so I have a friend um, who's 20, 24 years old and he... He's really too young for you. Stop it. I know. He's so cute though. But he's like really cute and really smart. And he's like, I just, I need some help. Like I want to go on Bumble and, and I want to go, Bumble's the one with the, you swipe still, but the women have to message you first. And I want to go on Tinder. He's like, but I just, I'm not great at the app. I don't want pictures. So like I spent way too much time helping, but it was kind of fun writing it because it was like, it is marketing. I got to tell you people like you are marketing yourself. So don't just throw it up there. And I know you're like, oh, it doesn't matter. People are just looking at the pictures. No, like present yourself in a way that's interesting. Like take a moment and think about it. And honest, you got to be honest. Have good pictures. Don't, not with other people, not with your ex. Those are all important points. Um, but also, rather than a list, like, for example, instead of saying I like biking and traveling and cooking, you know, a list, 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 like our, our eyes roll back on that. Who doesn't like it? Biking. But you could say, like, I once rode my bike through Europe and I learned how to cook and I make a killer, you know, souffle. Right. Make it and like a story. I'd like you to, you know, my next trip, you're coming with me. Message me for, oh, you know, whatever. Like something direct. like that. No, but right. it's fine. But, but tell a story. Just tell an interesting story. It gets someone's like, attention. I like turtles. I like this. Yeah, you got to like, right. give it give it a little bit of a give, some flavor, pop, some just zing. Pop, right. Yeah. Cuz you got a lot of other applicants. It's like writing a cover letter for a resume. If you want the job, spend some time. All right, let's give a sh- big shout out to our sponsors because we love them and thank you everyone for supporting them. Because they help us do the shows here and we only work with people we love. So, I know you'll love them too. What happens when secrets are revealed? That's the question at the heart of Pivot's Secret Lives of Americans. It's a groundbreaking documentary series that looks at the secrets we all keep, the strength it takes to reveal them to family and friends, and the realization that you are not alone. You can watch an all-new episode of Secret Lives of Americans this Friday at its new time, 7 p.m. Eastern and Pacific on Pivot. Secret Lives of Americans deals with some really important subjects, such as religious tolerance, addiction, transgender rights, same-sex marriage, and student debt. What makes this show truly unique is that each person filmed themselves with a handheld camera or phone over the course of several days. You see their lives change firsthand when they make the important decision to open up. Through each person's reveal, one thing becomes clear. It only takes one voice to change the story. Watch an all-new episode of Secret Lives of Americans this Friday at its new time, 7 p.m. Eastern and Pacific on Pivot, the television network from Participant Media. To find out how you can watch Pivot, go to pivot.tv. All right, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anderson. <laughs> I do, I give Emily the point when we're coming back from break, and she loves the point. I love the point. You do. It reminds me my dad used to do that because my dad used to be on um, cable access. He used to do a um, the auction. They used to do, like the channel, the he, PBS auction. Was he auction. an auctioneer? Uh huh. He really? would do the auction for like raising money for for PBS, but public. Did he like? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Like, my yeah, dad was a DJ. He was a radio did, announcer. Did he do like the auctioneer voice? Yes. <laughs> and he'd be like, "Hey, now turn time for news." That's how he talked. That's pretty cool. I know. I, I didn't like, know well, that. I know. I but like he was that. a lawyer. Like, but he was a he was a, a he was a shaker and a mover. But a he still, as a lawyer, would like kind of do, do the auctions and be like, "Now today, you can get this brand new car for your." Yeah, he talked like that in uh, this way. It was cute. It was yeah. sweet. All right, here we go. Emails. Because we love the emails, emails and we love hearing from you. And now, okay, email us feedback. I was going to sing, sing, sing. You could sing if you like. If I was going to make a got song. a stinger. A stinger? Yeah, you should make it like a, like a little intro. Like I should everybody. do it like a jingle. Yeah, a little jingle. Do you think, okay, I've had the same opening to Sex with Emily for 10 years. Yeah, it's time to change it. I don't you need know, to though. I kind of feel like it's one thing I'm going to keep the same. People are going to love whatever they associate with the show. I think it's like the thing. It makes me feel mm-hmm. warm and cozy. Do, the one do, time do, I listened do, to the show, do, I really liked it. People email all the time. Where did that email. song from? Oh, do you know? I those clips. Yeah, where the song I don't from? know where the song's from. Oh, I can tell you. 
she martini bomb. No, I do know, dude. I've been asked that for 10 years. No, I'm, just, I'm reiterating because I don't think the listener can hear what Madison's saying. So. <sighs> Get on your mic. Yeah, what the hell? Roll Bitch. on over, yo. I got a mic for you <laughs> right okay. there. But you're right. People do ask what it is. It's a great song and it, it's fun. Okay, so the point is feedback at sexwithemily.com. Mm-hmm. Also, go to the website. Ask Emily. Boop, right there. Send an email. So easy. But whether you're emailing us or leaving a voicemail, this show, Anderson, have you been on a show yet when we play voicemails? No. <gasps> I've, been, I've been excited for this and for weeks. This, Let's do you this. You look really excited. Okay, Let's so leave it. me a message, 818-275-7931. So many ways to reach us. We appreciate it. So many. Okay. Hi, Emily. I found your podcast while on a long car ride, and now I listen on my commute to work. I love your show because it's helping me to stay sexually in tune. I've been with my husband all together for six years and sex isn't as often as it used to be. Mm. So listening to your show encourages me to have sex more and masturbate. My question is about the elusive G-spot orgasms. When I was in college, I dated a guy who was quite large and it was curved. From intercourse, I would have earth-shattering orgasms. I mean like feet and hand-numbing orgasms. One time, my hands were still slightly tingly hours after sex. Gee, that's not good. Is that good? Yeah. That seems like it's damaging. <laughs> seems like nerves are Just getting Just a few like... hours is fine. If it went out for 12 hours, go see your doctor. Okay. Um, I'm still sexually attracted to my husband and love him dearly, but he's not as large. <laughs> he doesn't have the and it's hockey straight. stick dick. Oh, dude, I cannot achieve orgasm from intercourse, but I can from oral sex when I masturbate using a vibrator. This also frustrates my husband because he wants to satisfy me from intercourse. We've used all kinds of toys and no luck with a G-spot orgasm. What else can I do? Am I G-spot sexually doomed? Piper, 31, Florida. Piper. I like Piper. You know, you give a lot of advice and a lot of it uh, lands with, hey, you should listen to the show with your partner. Not in Piper's case. Piper should never hear this Don't email. tell him about the curve. Piper's husband should Piper's never husband hear should any not. of this. But, but no. Piper, um, first of all, thank you for all the kind words and thank you for listening to the show. And I'm glad that it's encouraging you um, to masturbate and have more sex. But I totally get it. You were with a penis that curved and did the thing and may I give you an earth-shattering orgasm. However, now how old are you? How long ago was that? You're 31, so maybe it was 10 years ago in college. Here's the thing. Your G-spot is still there. Mm-hmm. And I, I would I want to say that I think perhaps you're having this memory of this perfect penis that was able to, to, to stretch and move and hit you in that way. But also, there might be some positions and ways. I know you said you've tried it all. I'm trying to think what she said she did. She tried toys. Um, she tried positions? Have you tried different positions? Yeah. Like I'm wondering, have you tried a G-spot toy on your own or with your partner, like a, your husband, and had a G-spot orgasm since the guy. Because if you could figure out how to do it with that toy, you could figure out how to do it with your husband's penis. Yeah. I'm certain. And here's the good news. She's already located. What's a good G-spot toy, Madison, She's, right now that we love? G-spot toy would be the Rave by Weebuy. Oh, yeah, the, the Rave, Rave by, by Weebuy. Weebuy. We like it. Um, yeah, that's a really good one. So so here's the deal. Um, there's also, so sports sheets, they make, you know, sports sheets makes all the... the BDSM, but the really cool bondage gear that's no like idea. Velcro and stuff, but they also make positioning um, products like the for wedge sex positions. Whatnot. Yeah, but they don't make the wedge. Check this out. They make something called the G Spot Link, and it is so cool. You got to go to uh, the Sports Sheets banner on my website. I'm telling you, there's some videos. Did you use the G Spot Link? I use the G Spot Link. <gasps> that Madison, is why you just I got wandered it. over to the she table wandered here because I have to share. Go. Um, okay, so I used it with my boyfriend over this past weekend. And it's, um, as you'll see in the videos and as they'll kind of explain, it's these like Velcro cuffs and they've got like a little link that you can, you know, like, um, what is that called? Like a little clip. clip. it. Like you've yeah. got to clip in. Like yeah, a buckle. Yeah, like a seatbelt or a buckle. Like a there we go. Right. Um, so it's got a little buckle and you can buckle it together and you can have them really tight so your you legs your are cuffs. close together. Right, so your leg, you're on their back. Yeah, you're on your, your back. Your legs are up. And your legs are up. And like, I don't know, maybe not other people who are more, uh, who have more core strength, but I get exhausted holding my legs up in the air. If they're like folded over my head, I have to focus on keeping them directed. And this was so easy because he could hold on to the strap in between them right. and position my legs depending on where right. he wanted them to be. And it created a really tight space for him. Right. So even like, you know, my boyfriend's, you know, average, he's doing well in the penis department. But right. even if he wow. wasn't doing well in the penis department, it would still create a much tighter space and a much right. tighter feel so that um, so that you can like you know you can feel more it's hard, from his right. penis. Wow! And it was also, a great yeah, and also you can move it around because whether you know the whole thing with the curved penis, and I know this because my boyfriend has a curved penis, is that it naturally like hooks <laughs> and gets your G spot in certain positions. So if your guy now doesn't have like a gigantic penis or he doesn't have a curved penis, 
you, he can move your legs around using the strap. I wish you could see it. It's like I know a it's so hard wiper. to explain it. You got to yeah. go to the sports sheet setup because it is the cool. We, yeah. we just got the demo. Yeah, we tried it in every position and it was great. We even tried it with like um, <gasps> doggy style, kind of like with me flipped over on the bed with my legs hanging down and. That was great too, oh but it God. created he G was spots losing everywhere. his mind because it's so it feels so much Tight. tighter. Oh. Yeah, even if like you know, I don't think I'm like especially like I don't have a especially mm-hmm. wide set vagina. No, <laughs> everyone says that, but wide I really do, I really no. think it's okay. Um, and it just it like intensified wow. and, everything. And it felt great for you too. Yeah, and it felt great for me too. And it was like way less effort. And right. he could like clip it behind his leg or behind his neck if he wanted to. Right. If he just wanted my legs like up in the air. So. That is uh, my you, quick that is review. My, so we have a chance to talk sheets. about yeah. it. I'm so <laughs> glad. Right. Just this past weekend, so it's fresh on my mind. Okay, and lady that parts. sounds really fun. Okay, so Piper, yeah. get that. And then there's also the doggy style strap. That's another one that you... So doggy style position. God, people love doggy style. This can kind of enhance your doggy style because he can wrap it around your waist, right? When you're... Wrap it on your pelvis, right above your pelvis and you're having doggy style. Just check it all on the site. That's cool too. Here's something else you might not have tried. Have you been doing your Kegel exercises? Because I got to tell you, Piper, for me, that's why I'm wearing Kegel balls, even if they fall out at important meetings and stuff. Um, <laughs> they really help. Like, I'm telling you that the more I do my Kegels, the more G-spot orgasms I have. Because that those muscles, the pelvic floor muscles, they become stronger. It's like going to the gym. You you do wear Kegel balls or do your Kegel exercises. Download my app, Kegel Camp. It reminds you to do it every day or if you want to do it twice a day. You will have G-spot orgasms. So, and uh, use lots of lube and I would start, try some toys and just relax about it. It's going to happen. You've already had one in the past. So you will have another one. I feel good about this, Piper. Okay, now we're going to do voicemail. Mm-hmm. Voicemail time. Whoop, whoop. Hey, I also back to Piper for a second. It's good. It's, she's ahead of the game a little bit by knowing where her G-spot is. A lot of women live and die on this earth and never even know where it is. Exactly. Right? Yeah. I, I do believe that, that every woman can... can I, so I believe it could take some work. The G spotless group probably doesn't. The G spotless group. No, I think that they got they got to get off their asses and or stay on their asses Find and it, keep yeah. trying. <laughs> so if, there, if you were to stumble across a meeting and you saw on the chalkboard out front and said uh, coming together G, the G spotless group, you might stick your head in there and say, "Get to work, ladies." Not so sure. You got one, right? Okay, just keep looking. Stop it. You know what? I couldn't find it until I had a toy and I did my keggles. So. It hides. It can be hiding. And you got to have a clitoral orgasm. It helps to have clitoral orgasm. Mm-hmm. Listen, if you guys, if this whole new G-Spot world is new to you, check out, we've done so many, a lot of shows on the G-Spot, how to find it. And we have a lot of great blogs on our site as well. All right. So it looks like we're ready to take uh, my first uh, voicemail. Oh, welcome. Lots of being with you. To the voicemail So are we ready? Portion I'm going to crank of the show. this up. Crank it up. Here we go. Hi, Emily. Great show. My name is Mike and I live in Ontario. I'm going to be 31 this month. And my wife and I have been married for almost 10 years, and we have two children. I recently found out that she had an affair uh, for a period of about six weeks. Uh, And prior to that, she had actually had a one-night stand with a guy at a bar. And I'm trying to figure out what to do right now because I don't really want to, you know, end my relationship and end our life. And everything we have going together. Um, but at the same time, I'm someone who, you know, holds a sex really sacred in the relationship. And I don't really know what to do because I feel like she broke that trust mm-hmm. and I don't know how to repair that trust. And I feel like, you know, in order to put mm-hmm. us back together, I need to go now and be able to experience whatever it's like to kind of go off and have, sexual interactions with someone and I don't know, maybe that'll hurt us more, maybe not. You know, what do you think? Because right now I love her, the sex is great, but it's just makeup sex and we had a lot of problems before, including, you know, uh, lack of communication and um, kind of her not giving sex to me and me not, you know, giving her space and conversations and other such mumbo jumbo so how to move that forward I feel like I'd like to just go off and have a few relationships and then come back but I don't want to lose it and I don't really want to hurt her got it thanks bye thanks Michael wow that was good right that was uh, such a typical guy approach to like I'm gonna go out and some chicks and I'll feel better Uh, first of all I love the voicemails people keep calling us Um, let me give you the number again in case I didn't I don't think I did 818 
two seven five seven nine three one. Michael. Wait, what's that? What's that stand for? S W S W E one eight one eight S W E one. Oh, sorry, eight one eight ask. SWE1. Ask SWE1. And it's on the website too. Under Ask Emily, you can find it on the website. Okay, here's the thing, honey. Michael, thank you so much for calling. Um, I get it. You want to go out and you want to have sex with other people and that'll make you feel like it's a level playing like field. Even. doesn't work that way, honey. It really does not work that way. And um, I get that you're jealous and that you're hurt and that you hold sex sacred and she did not. But here's the thing about cheating in relationships. She did break your trust and it sounds like you were having issues before and maybe you're even blaming yourself for not giving her. I get it. You might be saying, well, I understand why she did it and some days you're really angry with her. But it's really, really hard for couples to rebuild trust on their own. It just is. Like you, you just, you're not equipped with it. You were trying to deal with issues before this happened. So I, this is where I suggest that if you guys really want to make it work, do not go out and bang anyone else. Mm. Don't have sex. That's not going to help. You've got a lot of anger. She's probably got issues. You guys got to get in some some therapy, couples therapy. Yeah, you got to like, regain there's the really, trust. really like this is the one time that and like trauma. Like you, you got to regain the trust. And on your own, you're gonna keep thinking about it. Keep thinking about it. You'll think it's gone for a day, right? You gotta you yes. gotta have work with a counselor. Not not go once. Like this could take months, but it's gonna be the best work you years. ever did. Could take years. And but here's a, the most important variable. Here is the kids. He's got the two He's kids. Got two kids. So you are a father before you are a husband, and that's like your most important role. And you got to do what is best for the kids, and you got you got to figure that out with your wife, who you don't trust right now. So that's gonna be the right. hardest thing. But you got to put their the kids' interests first before yours. I right? So. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, yes. Absolutely, be considering the kids. And maybe that means you guys don't stay together. Right. Maybe they're better off. But I know they that are I can't, married and they should try to, the best for, for yourselves and for the kids. If they can work it out. But I, I come from a family where I'm, I really think my parents should have gotten divorced when I was young. I, they, they did not belong together. And uh, I think that I got damaged because I had two parents together that hated each other. You so, just can't win. I'm telling you, either people's parents got divorced. There's two kinds of people. People's parents who got divorced and messed them up, and people's parents who stayed together and messed them up. Right. That's the two stories I hear. And you got it. And then the people who think their parents were so happy, and then they idealize it and think they can never find anyone else, and that messes them up. That's going to be like their parents. No, no, they think they can never find a relationship that'll be as perfect as their parents. Right. And then that screws them up. Yeah. We're all messed up. There's no, we all got issues. Everyone's got baggage. Everyone's got. But you got to think of what's the healthiest environment for your kids to grow up in. Obviously, it's going to be that you guys can reconcile this and you can get treatment and and learn to trust her again and rebuild that relationship. But if that's not an option, uh, A, (laughs) his idea of going out and evening the score, as appealing as that sounds, and I totally get it. We all want to do that. It's it's not going to do anything good for the relationship. It will further damage it for sure. For sure. So maybe maybe it's, you know, maybe they, maybe it's over. And, and you figure out how to, you know, raise these kids separated. Well, no, he's got to try it for therapy. And then there's always one couple I always hear, but my wife won't go or my husband won't go. I mean, it's almost like saying, this is what pisses me off. Saying that you won't go to therapy when you're in a relationship is like saying you won't go to the dentist. Right. Like, it's that important. It's it's the same, of, of same importance, I think. I think that every relationship needs that kind of tune If you think up. of the mind as like a muscle, for sure. The mind yeah. is a muscle. Get to therapy. And I don't hear you can't afford, most, if you have insurance, it's going to cover your therapy. Yeah. And if you that's don't have insurance, important. you could get a sliding scale. But there's nothing that's more important than your mental health. Get in there. And you know what, Michael? You're going to be um, the one, uh, I don't know, I hate to say winning, but you're, you're going to have the head start with the therapist because a lot of time they're trying to identify the issues. You know what the issue is. So you're going to go in there. You're going to have the therapist in your corner who's going to be helping you, you know, and your wife figure things out. Right. Has there ever been a... What? Where like she ends up cheating with a therapist. Has that ever happened? Oh, God, I hope not. Dude, yeah. stop. Probably. Why are you, Michael, we've just helped Probably Michael. Has Why do you got to open up that whole other can of worms when we're moving on? Just thinking of we're evil therapists. We're moving on to another email. My dad was a therapist. Yeah, yeah. that figures it. Makes it up. Makes sense. <laughs> I'm not saying you got to, yeah, you're not going to marry your therapist. You just got to go see a therapist. Can you imagine how diabolical, just how evil you have to be as a therapist if you were to actually do that? Okay, let's move on. Dear Emily. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've been listening to your show through the podcast app, and I've got to say that I love it. You and your co-hosts definitely help my day go by a ton, go by a ton faster, and it's cool to hear advice. I live in Boise, Idaho. I've been divorced for five years, and recently I've been struggling a lot with dating. I meet a lot of great women, but I always have issues with their body weight and the fact that they have too much hair below. Mm. I know this seems shallow. I know women have a hard time losing weight because the female body works different than a man's. And I know the vagina is very sensitive, and there are a lot of women who have a hard time wanting to keep it shaved or keep it trimmed. 
trimmed. I'm not a fan of women with a big hairy bush. Mm. It's not the 70s anymore, but every time I bring up the fact that it's too hairy, clean it up or I won't go down there, I'm in the wrong. Well, what I mean, the fuck? What kind of a way is that? Dude, keep, approaching just, it. We're, just, we're not even done yet. <laughs> I mean, I work out six times a day. I do CrossFit. I'm on the paleo diet. Plus, I do my fair share of manscaping. I take care of myself. I'm looking for a thick girl that enjoys being with me and has qualities and features I'm looking for. Yet, it seems I settle for the bottom of the totem pole. Is that wrong of me? Do I need to be upfront with women about my needs or do I need psychological help? Thanks a ton. Roman from Boise, Idaho. How old is Roman? Yes and yes. You need psychological Younger. help? No. Uh, he doesn't say. God He's, damn it, Roman. early 20s. Yeah, early I can probably. tell you. Six times a day, you work out. Six times. Hey, Roman, beating off doesn't count as working out, okay? <laughs> and uh, I know this guy. Yeah, I know this guy too. This guy I spends this his guy. life on on uh, the the Tinder, yep. maybe Thrinder as well, mm-hmm. and everything's about just getting his bang on. And it's like he wants gym, perfect women though, and women can't meet laundry. up to his standards. Though. But here's more before we go on to Roman. Yeah. Before we finish with that, you start commenting. There's more, Anderson. There's more. Wait, Roman brings more oh, to yeah. the table. Oh, oh, just Roman, you wait. It's a gift that keeps on giving. Side note. This guy wrote in, uh, Roman wrote three separate emails. Ooh. Each one was a little different. But Every all time of them, he got back from the gym, he wrote you, bro. But all of them had us feeling pretty dismayed. One was about pubic hair. Huh. One focused on the body weight issue. Yeah. One outlined both. Also interesting, they progressed from aggressive and unpo- unapologetic to him being concerned about his behaviors and his own thought process. So we combined the three emails together. Okay. So first email, how he's dating women. So I told you all that. So, you know, it's interesting. So at the end of the day, Roman, it's not about the woman you're dating or even your standards. I think it's about... His intimacy issues and deep-rooted mm. stuff going on with you and this the, the ability he's working on his body perfection and then he's trying to find a woman to match that. Yeah. But I think that he's you're thinking Roman that if you are putting all this work in that you're a better person, it's going to make you love yourself. Which I actually think maybe you don't truly love yourself right now I because think he's, you're blaming the women. He's what? probably young and he's probably trying to figure things out. And I commend him for writing you and listening to the show and, and trying to figure yeah, things out. Yeah, thank you, Roman. Yeah, I think he might just really lack insight and perhaps that it's a product of being young and perhaps something like this might give him a little insight, at least how he comes off. Give him off. some insight. Because he's, he's coming off to you and to us like this aggressive, right. objectifying of women. And I like how he gives himself almost kudos. Like, I get it, man. Women's bodies are different. Right. They're harder. It's harder for the for the broads to lose, to lose the weight right. over there. I yeah. get that. But With all those dairy he, queens. He's right. definitely considering, he's just thinking of, of them as, as, as fleshlights with legs. Yeah. Right? He doesn't, yeah, maybe, maybe. And I think that he's also might be finding a lot of fault in women, so he might not, he doesn't have to focus on his own Yeah, cause. he sounds like a perfectionist. Uh-huh. And uh, I th- hopefully and he, he outgrows this. he works this. out six times a day. Six times a day is not possible unless he does it for a living. Do you not have a job? I mean, obsessive behaviors, like I just feel like that you're putting these standards, these, these impossibly high standards you have on yourself, which I can't imagine unless you're like training for the Olympics, that's a really fun day. Yeah. Um, on other six people times. as well. Six times a, a day, yeah. Maybe before breakfast, after breakfast, before lunch, after lunch, before dinner, after well, why dinner. Why would you just move into the gym? Like, what would you? Six times is too much. It takes it takes like just a half hour round trip just to get to the gym and back. If you just play tag with the gym, right? Most people live like fifteen minutes away. I know. Yeah. It's a whole thing. Uh, Roman, here's the thing. I don't know why you got divorced, but um, oh, he's divorced. He was divorced. It maybe he's earlier. not young twenties then. I think early thirties, maybe, but I'm not sure. Aye, I you feel gotta like hope younger. Yeah, I, I would think that. Yeah. He's divorced, so I'm just thinking that the thing about divorce is, I think I know a lot of people who have like get married young and they get divorced, and it's a great time to learn about yourself, like mm-hmm. to look at like, well, what what happened here? What did I learn about myself? About what I want a partner? Again, I might just you say psychological help, like it's a bad thing, Roman. I think we all need a little psychological help. You heard me say that to the last, yeah. you know, email, and I think to the next to, one to Michael. Everyone does. Uh, everyone needs a little therapy. I'm telling you, it is the most important work you could do, Roman. Yeah. So I think that you're you're thoughtful, and I know this is bothering you, and I just think that to get some perspective would help you. I'm sure you got health insurance. You seem like a, you know, you get hurt there at the gym. You're going to need like some you, kind of. You might have a little little something against the ladies out there, Roman. You think he doesn't a like little, women? It sounds like a little bit maybe, and just the way that he phrased the. Uh, Big hairy hairy bush. Bush. I'm not going to go down the bush on you is coming unless you back, take Roman. care of the bush. So that's not you good see, news for the guy for said that to me, um, I would be like... Maybe he did that just for color for the sake yeah, of the email. Yeah, but maybe. how did he word it? Like, I'm not going down there unless yeah, not, you take I, care I, of the I'm bush. I'm not going to go... Do, yeah. Take care of that bush, missy. Like, yeah. like that's just... Women Almost don't Almost like want. he's ordering at a restaurant. He's like, I told you I don't want parsley on my plate. Get it right. out. Exactly. Yeah. Right. I hear you. Um, you got to be tricky with the women the way you talk about it. If a guy said that to me, I'd be like out the door with my bush. 
But I think that what push. I pick up from that email, and if you were to talk about this email three months from now and bring up the Roman email, I'd go right back to the six times a day. It's just there's something up with that. Did he really say six? Do you think that was exaggeration too? Perhaps. I just... There's a lot going on here, but Roman, I like that. Roman, I love that you love the show and that you're listening, and I feel like that's the first step. Like you're, you're, you're going to be evolving here. I walked here. to the studio for my car. My car is parked around the block. Do you think I should count that as a workout? Yeah, you could do whatever. How many steps did you do today? Like a hundred. Do you measure your steps? Well, my little Fitbit does oh, for me. Yeah, I'll tell you exactly how many, Emily. We'll my mom there. and my stepdad are like what? step hoarders. They- 554. That doesn't seem right. <laughs> You gotta get out more. I do. They're like hoarders. Like I they do, do ten thousand like, a day. They do like twelve thousand a day. Like they're like they did twenty thousand. That's my goal, a but I usually hit ten thousand a day. Always, because you walk well, the dog. I usually do. Right. Yeah. I, I don't have the thing, but I do. I do like three thousand in my house alone. I'm constantly one room. To the You're next pacing. Room. Are you I'm serious? Const- yeah. I'm never up sitting down in my house. Rarely, right. I could see that. I'm watching something. Yeah. yeah. I'm here, but here you're sitting, so I can look into your eyes. Mm-hmm. I but have I, get, not, I need to pace not, too. I'm more. Like we've our meet. You have not worked out to me. <laughs> <laughs> not once. Not a single session. Exactly. Um, do we have time for one more voicemail? Let's, that was fun. I love the voicemail. Was that fun? Oh, we're going to do another voicemail. Mm-hmm. Hi, Emily. My name's Nina. I'm 24. I've been in a relationship with my partner for almost three years. I love our sex life, but I don't initiate sex often. This is not something my boyfriend has brought up to me as an issue, but I just feel bad about it. It's not that I'm not attracted to him. It's just that I have a lower sex drive and usually need a specific environment to be in the mood. So my two-part question is, A, what are your suggestions for me so I can make a better effort to initiate more? And B, what positions would you suggest for a woman where I can be doing more of the work and be more in control? I feel like guys have so many more options than women in terms of being in the driver's seat. Love your podcast. I'm listening from Maryland through the podcast app on my iPhone. Oh, thank you. She was I so love, official. She was so official, yeah. and that was so, um, she was very articulate. Nina. Nina, which is uh, what my little sister calls my other little sister. Oh. It's her nickname for her, Nina. Nina, That's I really, funny. thank you for that that great question and um, for listening to the show. God, I like these emails. Mm. I just want to get emails all day you long. Mean okay, so here's the qu- voicemails. Yes. Different from emails. Okay, so you would like to initiate more, but you have a little lower sex drive and also wants uh, tips for sex positions that put you in control. So you've been together for three years, you say, and okay, initiating sex comes up both ways. We hear it from men who want, women who want men to initiate more, men who want women to initiate more. Why does she want to initiate, though? I mean, if she doesn't have a very high sex drive, why... I understand that, like she has a higher sex drive and she needs it more, but why? It's it's like I don't really like going on roller coasters. I need to like figure out how I can yeah. get to the front of the line. I'm not off. sure, but I think that um, maybe it would make maybe there are times that you are turned on, perhaps Nina. Like you're like, oh, I want it now, and then he doesn't initiate. But I think it's a good skill for everyone to learn. Yeah. how to initiate sex. We talked a couple of weeks ago about finding that guy, your boyfriend's on switch. And yeah. most guys have an on switch between his they legs. Probably have a few on switches. Yeah, right. For women, it's between their ears. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and your nips a little you know, there's different Some ways nips for women but I would say you know to initiate sex with him um, more I would say like if you're really not sure because there's a lot of people are just like I just don't really know how to do it ask him like you could even say to him like I want to initiate it. Like, what would turn you on? If you're not sure after three, you know, yeah. you just might not be sure. He might be like, I have, or ask him what, hey, what would turn you on? He might say, God, if I come in and I you open the door and you're on your knees and give me a blowjob. Just guessing. Wow. Some guys might like that. There's a steak is um, cooking but, um, in the kitchen. But you also, you know, I mean, that's, I just think it's really like that, the kind of thing where you practice it, it makes perfect and you'll find your own groove. It could just be like, I want to have sex. You could just say it like, I want to have sex with you and start kissing them. You could start, you know, you could make a special night for him when he comes home and like, you know, put a little blindfold on him, give him a little massage. I would try a few things with him. If, if you're not getting anywhere, then uh, plan B would be to like sit down and ask him like, what would get you going or how would you like me to initiate, right. you know? Because I often tell guys that when like my girlfriend says she wants me to tie her up or she wants me to initiate and I don't know what to do and it's like, well, ask her what would turn her on. What? You get a rope. Get a rope. Get yeah. some sport sheets, cuffs. They're amazing. Okay, so um, also... The second part. And I'm like, that you're still attracting. Okay, better. Okay, so you would like sex positions that put you in control. I mean, I, definitely woman on top is the dominant position that does put you in control because then you could, you know, you can move around exactly how you need to, you know, have that orgasm. So that's how it works for a lot of women. And I'm telling you, these uh, G-spot, G-spot link that Madison talked about, I mean, 
you can control if you want more G-spot orgasms. I mean, you put your feet up there, like your boyfriend might be moving it, but like you're definitely are having like killer, killer orgasms. If you, um, vibrators, I mean, sex toys are great too. In any position, you hold one in your hand, um, for clitoral stimulation. Um, we love the rabbit lay on. That's like, it's a little rabbit vibe, but it's like in your hand, it's a clitoral vibe. And the two little ears, they like nestle with your clitoris (laughs) and you could use it, um, you can use it, you know, during intercourse and stuff. I would add some lube, and um, lube is great for orgasms. I'm trying to think what else, you know, reverse cowgirl. I mean, to be honest, I'm not going to take some crazy weird positions, but I do think that, you know, you could do wheelbarrow. But the truth is, it's like woman on top. It's doggy yeah. style. It's but I think that, um, yeah, top obviously cowgirl. on top is is where the ladies yeah. have the most. Yeah, uh, exactly. And I would also say that you know, how is your masturbation routine? I know you have a low sex drive, but I'm just telling you. It's kind of like, I always say, it's like going to the gym. The more that you masturbate, the more you self-pleasure yourself, the, the more sex you're going to want. It's like the more I do my kegels, the more juice about orgasms I want. And I want more sex. So um, I also have a book called Hot Sex, Over 200 Things You Could Try Tonight. I have a, a lot, lot of positions, positions in there. there. A, a lot. lot. Anderson's in all of them twice. I would have bet that there's probably like a dozen in there. That, yeah. uh, we'll that are good the, that you, not, you might not have seen before. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but again, the, the initiating, once you start doing it, it might be uncomfortable the first time. But like anything with sex, the more you do it, the more comfortable it will be. And I think it's a great time to start communicating with your guy. And yep. Okay. Thank you, Nina. That was a great voicemail. Thank you, Anderson. It was a lovely show. Thank you, M, for having so me. So good to see you. Good and everyone you. can come um, see your podcast and your movie. Yeah, groupers, uh, the movie.com. I'm, I'm, I'm a week into my uh, campaign uh, right now as I speak these words. So... I have a bunch of really fun perks, including my cold cockle production swag and shirts, part of the perks, uh, coffee mugs, all of the shorts that I've been talking so much about. You're actually a voice in one of the shorts that is shorts. available for part of the perks. Uh, also to Colta Carano, all those, all my shorts are finally up for grabs for uh, helping uh, you know raise money for the feature. Cool. Which is insane. The feature is insane. I can't believe it. I'm so Emily. proud of it. That's awesome. I want to see one it. One of those movies that's very controversial. It's all about homophobia and bullying. Yes. Okay, check out Anderson's stuff. And um, also, I'm actually heading to Europe this week. Europe? So, yeah. What? I'm going Where to... Where are you going? Remember we talked to Hanover, Hamburg, Germany. Oh, that's right. And yeah, I'm yeah. going to... But now I'm going to Hamburg, which is confusing. But uh-huh. they're both in Germany. Now I'm going to Hanover, Hamburg. I'm going to Euroframe, which is a sex conference, uh-huh. sex industry conference. And then I'm also going to Amsterdam. Ooh. And... Um, Never been to Amsterdam. I'm going to be going to some stores and doing some appearances mm-hmm. not sure exactly where yet but i'll light? be there in october i'll be in the red lake district in Brilliant. a window shocking um but yeah email feedback you at sex or check out my website social should. media because i'll be posting where i'm at so follow me on everything you instagram sex family twitter to do a show from the red lake district i know I have, i'm getting a new zoom thingy mike that's only audio i've got a camera too mike. yeah you should document i this. got some That'd yeah be fun. yeah yeah, you yeah. okay okay check it out i could do some live um, yeah. stuff on you the walking phone. Down, you need to do a little video of you walking down the red light district. I will. You've been there Don before? and Don t- long time ago. It's just so College. easy, right? Because sex with Emily and that's what people would expect. I and know, I would that's love why to I'm see going. What, how you react to it. Okay, good. So be following my Snapchat and uh, all my stuff in the next week or so. And if you want to see me there, I'll, maybe I'll see you too because I'll be at places that I don't know yet. Okay, thank you, Anderson. Thank you, um, Madison and Eddie and Jamie and Lori. And thank you everyone for listening. I so appreciate it. Was it good for you? Email me, feedback at sexwithemily.com. and friends, they're always asking me how to spice up their relationships. They all want to know how to bring the spark back. One great way is to add in some variety. Well, our good friends at adamandeve.com know all about that. adamandeve.com is where you'll find all my favorite high-end toys like the Magic Wand and the Wee Vibe Tango as well as every formula of quality lube you can think of. You should all be using lube, by the way. I have made that clear. Try out Pure or Slick with Adam and Eve sells those as well. The folks at AdamandEve.com are pleasers, so they put together a special deal for Sex with Emily listeners. If you order today and use code EMILY, they'll cut the price of almost any single item in half. Not enough for you? They'll also toss in three free DVDs and ship it all to you for free. And for a limited time, they will include a free gift. It's a sexy premium silicone pleasure ring. Rings are a great way to enhance intercourse, and if you haven't tried one before this is the time. It can help guys stay harder longer while providing that crucial clitoral stimulation that most women need to orgasm during intercourse. Get your free ring, free shipping, free DVDs, and 50% off any item. Go to adamandeve.com and use code EMILY at checkout. 
People joke a lot about men not being able to last long in bed. You know it's a widespread issue and it becomes something society recognizes as a condition worth poking fun at. Well, for the millions of men who experience premature ejaculation, though, it is not funny. In fact, it can be a huge problem with effects that extend beyond the bedroom. This is why I love talking about Promescent, a clinically proven FDA-compliant product that can significantly delay ejaculation. Think about what that means. If you're able to last longer, you have less anxiety about performing, you can focus on being in the moment with your partner, enjoying sex instead of stressing about it, and your partner gets the benefit of a longer, more intense experience. Okay, so what is Promescent exactly? Well, it's a topical spray that gets applied to the penis to improve a man's stamina. Unlike common delay sprays that simply make you numb, Promescent is quickly absorbed, allowing you to enjoy the sensations of sex. When used properly, it won't transfer to your partner, which is never a good thing. What other product can help you last longer, have better sex, reduce performance anxiety, and improve your relationship? None. So I strongly encourage you to learn more about Promescent. Go to my website, click on the Promescent banner, or visit promescent.com today. That's P-R-O-M-E-S-C-E-N-T.com.